Hello and welcome to the Poundland Bescott Stadium, the home of Warsaw FC, the EFL League Two side, as we bring you action from the 2024 Centenary Shield tonight. England under 18 scoreboys hosting the Republic of Ireland under 18 scoreboys. Well, I'm Isaac Barrington in position to take you through all of the action here today at the Bescott Stadium this evening. Very much looking forward to this one. England looking to bounce back from two defeats. And Ireland coming into this game off the back of just one point in their opening two games. Let's now show you then how England line up. We'll show you the England players and get to know them a little bit more ahead of kickoff. So James Taylor is the England goalkeeper from the Samuel Whitbread Academy and recently had the honour of meeting England goalkeeper Jordan Pickford at Wembley as well at the recent England International so a great honour for him England's number two is Archie Elston he'll be playing right back tonight in the lineup from Thomas Telford School Elston will be looking to impress for England out there in what is actually the penultimate game for boss Luke Hampton. Josh Thine, number three, left back, one of the England players who have represented their county, Durham, in the squad, the joint best represented in the squad. Deacon Smalley, the central midfield player from Rainhill High School in Merseyside, starts for England today in a third successive game. Archie Small, centre-back, comes straight into the team tonight for his first start. We expect him to line up at centre-back. Then England's number eight, Ashton Houlihan, central midfield player, also in for his first start this evening. Another one of those Durham County Schools FA representatives. Jude Whistle, striker, number nine, scored last week. England's only goal of the tournament so far, that. He'll be looking to add to his tally, I'm sure, this evening. And we expect him, of course, to lead the line tonight. Ollie Spicer, the number 10, he is back from injury. He missed last week's defeat away in Wales, but he's back available this evening and straight back in for Luke Hampton. Aaron Cox will likely play on the wing from Brookhouse College, one of just a couple of players who played in this tournament last year for England. Was mainly used as a substitute option last time around, though, but very much an important player this season. Freddie Hayden is the next name on the England team sheet. Striker came off the bench and got a really good assist for England last week, playing off the wing, actually, but usually lines up up front he starts tonight and then the final player in the England 11 is Jack Matten called up to the squad after the first game following an injury to Joe Smart and he's now made two successive starts so Jack Matten the final player on the England team sheet tonight well let's show you the fixtures then the results that have been played so far so obviously three more games to be played after this. Northern Ireland will face Wales on Thursday the 11th. Next week, England will host Scotland in England's final game at Chesterfield before the final game of this year's Centenary Shield is Wales against the Republic of Ireland. And let's show you the standings as well ahead of kickoff today. Last year, of course, the trophy was shared. But it's still all to play for this time around with Northern Ireland having won three out of their three games so far in Wales also with a 100% record. But we're counting down to kickoff then here at the Poundland Bescott Stadium in Warsaw. But first, let's hear from the two head coaches. Luke, you're obviously coming into tonight's game off the back of two defeats. What have you learned from those games to bring into tonight's fixture? Well, we've, um, we, we, we were poor in Northern Ireland, there's no getting away from that, but we did show some big signs of improvement in the last game. So what that's done is given me some food for thought in terms of the squad. Um, and as a result of the way we performed, particularly in the second half, um, we've made uh, four changes to tonight's team. Um, we're hoping to carry on that second half performance into tonight's game. Yeah, obviously you've made those four changes. Three in for their first start, I think, as well. And you've got Ollie Spicer back from injury. Do you want to just talk us through the thinking behind those changes? Yeah, so we've decided to change shape today because we felt that Freddie Hayden, when he came in last time, made a real difference to us. He stretched the Welsh um, bat line and gave us some real impetus. And Ollie Spicer, obviously, is a key player for us. So we're hoping that we can get him on the ball as well as Aaron Cox on the other side and um, make use of the big big pitch here at Walsall and, and the good surface that we're on. 
And for tonight's games, your, your opponents in the Republic of Ireland, what sort of a test and, and game are you expecting tonight? They're a really good side. We've watched obviously both their games, and they, although they drew with Scotland and lost to the, um, Northern Ireland, they're really unlucky in the Northern Ireland game. Probably should have won that game. They're a good footballing team. They're really well organised. So we're expecting a stiff test. Um, in order for us to get some points on the board, we're going to have to really up our game and be at our best. Brilliant. Thank you. Good luck tonight. Cheers. Thank you, Derek. Your opening two games have obviously been really close encounters. Are you expecting it to be that way tonight? Yeah, absolutely. Um... Like I know England lost their two games, but they actually played very well in the two games, and they had as many chances as the other teams had. So um, yeah, I think it'll be another another close one. And for your team, what have you learnt from the games that you've played so far to take into tonight's game? Um, we showed we showed some some really good stuff at times, um, but we we saw where we were making mistakes. So we've worked on that with the lads over the last couple of days and before the last match, and like that. You know, each of the games was close, and it was only small little little issues along the way. So, um, there's definitely a lot to take from it to, to bring into this one. Yeah, and just finally, what's the what's the mood been like in your camp ahead of this fixture? Obviously, coming here, playing away from home at an EFL stadium. What the what's the mood with the lads in the change room? Yeah, the lads are really looking forward to it. It's it's great to to get here and to get into a, to get into a good stadium, and the pitch is the pitch is excellent as well. And uh, the lads are really looking forward to the challenge, and like that, uh, Ireland against England is always an exciting one for the lads to get to play as well. Thank you very much and good luck tonight. Thanks very much. Cheers. Well, great to hear there then from both England boss Luke Hampton and the Republic of Ireland manager Derek O'Brien. And I'm delighted to say that in position here at the Panland Bescot Stadium this evening, I am joined by a man who made over 500 appearances across his professional football career playing for the likes of Everton, Norwich City and Wigan Athletic. Matt Jackson, thank you very much for joining us this evening. International schools football on the agenda tonight. You looking forward to it? I really am. It's a big throwback for me. 35 years or so since I was lucky enough to represent my country at this level. And no, it's been brilliant. Actually, some old faces still around from that time. My old county manager I've just seen for the first time in that time. So brilliant, brilliant memories. Yeah, tell us a bit about those memories because it must be such a, an exciting occasion for the young players to be stepping out onto a field like this, an EFL side. What did it feel like for you as a young player growing up and representing your country? I mean, absolutely fabulous in terms of the honour of doing those things. For me, there were some, some really strange parallels that I played. Our first game was against Switzerland up at Goodison um, and I ended up signing for Everton within a couple of years of doing that, which was a, a brilliant story for me personally. Great at the time. I've since just recently been managing um, director over in Zurich of Grasshopper Zurich so the links with Switzerland have, have carried on from there really so brilliant memories obviously had good players around Dave Weatherall was my centre-half partner at the time who had a really good professional career himself and we remained close throughout that time so some good personalities some really good friends uh, around the time but just the excitement of played I mean the game was everything then the structure of professional football these days is a bit different the academy starting so early but yeah, for me personally actually the schoolboy route into the professional game was the one you had to take through your district and county exactly what these boys are experiencing and they'll be having a fabulous experience here tonight yeah brilliant great to hear some of your memories there and, and who knows maybe the young English or Irish players taking to the field tonight could one day go on to have such an illustrious playing career as well. We'll show you the two team lineups in just a moment as we await the arrival of them out onto the field of play here at the home of Warsaw FC. It's a nice venue tonight, it's overcast a little bit but the rain is holding off as the sprinklers continue just to water the pitch but it must be such an exciting moment for these young players to be taking to, to the home of a, a professional football club like this. Yeah, they get to see a little bit of uh, what the game can be like and it's good that they get the mix-up of venues but certainly from a professional point of view to get an insight into the way that a football ground works at this level to deal with the nerves, you know, you have a stand here with a lot of people in it they'll, they'll know they have family and friends here watching them they will have the nerves associated with that so for some of, for some of the boys it will be you know, the best ground that they ever play at and, and certainly one of the biggest fixtures they ever play in so brilliant that they've come through the system to do this and a great honour for, for both sets to be representing their country yeah well the two teams then make their way out onto the field of play here at the Panman Bescot Stadium it's England under 18 schoolboys up against the Republic of Ireland under 18 schoolboys both have had difficult centenary shield campaigns so far but will we get a winner tonight can England get their first points of the shield tournament 
Well, can the Republic of Ireland push on and get their first win? Well, the two teams are just out onto the field of play now. England in the red strip tonight and the Republic of Ireland, of course, in the white and green. Referees are Jamie Howe, assistant referees Ryan Price and Callum Johnson. And the fourth official, Kean Salisbury. We'll pause now to take a moment for the national anthems. Well, national anthems complete then. Spine tingling stuff for these players as they take to the field here at the home of Warsaw FC. England under 18 facing the Republic of Ireland under 18s in the 2024 Centenary Shield. Here's confirmation of the England team. James Taylor captains the side tonight. Archie Elston, Joshua Thine, Deacon Smalley, Archie Small, Ashton Houlihan, Jude Entwistle will lead the line. Oliver Spicer is back. Aaron Cox, Freddie Hayden and Jack Matten make up the rest of England's starting 11. As for the Republic of Ireland then, Oshin Cooney is one of a few changes actually to Derek O'Brien's team tonight. He comes in between the sticks in goal. Connor Cannon, Kyle McDonough, Captain Callum Honaghan, Evan Lynch, Derry Patton, Hugh Parker, Kyle Donoghue, Dara Coyle, Callum Doyle-Travers and Aidan Russell Vargas are the rest of the Irish starting lineup. Derek O'Brien is joined by Alan Murphy in the Ireland technical area tonight. And just a word as well on the young mascots that you may have seen there just walking out with the players here at the Bescot Stadium. They've actually travelled all the way up from Bournemouth for this game, so they've travelled away for it from BRS Coaching FC, so welcome to them and welcome to you at home as well watching on either the Channel 4 streaming services app or of course ESF8 TV on YouTube. Matt, how do you see this game going tonight then? England taking on Ireland, of course we're expecting it to be lively, it's always close when these two teams meet, England just narrowly winners last time's out but hosts here tonight, have you got a feeling as to which way it might go? Well, England certainly will be hoping that home advantage counts for something. We'll be looking to stamp their impetus on the game early on. They'll certainly be wanting to start quickly. They'll certainly need some results in terms of the table as well. So there is a certain pressure on them, as there will be on both sides. But I'm sure the Irish counterparts will come and give their all. Got some big physical specimens as well. So it'll be very interesting to see the styles of the team as the game begins. Yeah, as we just see the two captains there with the match officials, James Taylor, with the honour of wearing the captain's armband tonight. It's the first time in this Centenary Shield campaign that he has skippered the team. And Callum Honaghan continues his captain duties for the Republic of Ireland. 
just moments away now from getting this one underway. England's third and the Republic of Ireland's third game in the Centenary Shield this year as well. The Republic of Ireland, of course, having hosted this particular fixture last year, the way in which the Centenary Shield works. If you host the fixture one year, you'll play visitors in the same fixture the following campaign. That's exactly what the Republic of Ireland are here to do today. And they'll be looking to pile more misery in terms of the results on England's campaign so far, but they have not really performed too bad so far, England. The same for the Republic of Ireland, who maybe feel as though they could have got a few more points on the board. England still pointless at the bottom of the table, but it's all to play for here tonight. Really looking forward to taking you through the action this the first of back-to-back -back England home games in the Centenary Shield. The action will be brought to you next Friday night from Chesterfield FC. But it's here from Warsaw FC tonight. England in the red and the Republic of Ireland here as visitors in the white and green. What's it like for these young players in just these final few moments before kickoff? Any nerves, do you think, creeping in at this stage now, Matt? There should be. If there's no nerves, it's a bad sign. So they'll have had the build-up all day. They'll have had the excitement knowing that the game's on television. Brilliant for them, and now they just want to get started. But it's important. You have to start any game at any level well, quickly, do professional things early, because trying to pick up a tempo if you don't start well is really difficult. Even the very best sides struggle to do it. I was at Anfield last night watching Liverpool and they struggled <laughs> in those early stages against Sheffield United. A little bit of a contrast here, but it does just show those standards shouldn't change whatever team you're playing for. Yeah, well, we are underway then. England get the ball rolling at the start of this first half. Immediately it goes long forwards and maybe that's a sign of a more pragmatic route that England might take in this game. Immediately into the penalty area as well. Entwistle is there in the six-yard box now! And Jude Entwistle gets the opening goal inside what 15 seconds and England are ahead. Matt Jackson. Well, if you're going to start well and you're going to start quickly, you might as well score in the first 15 seconds. I'm not sure we were quite predicting that, but it certainly sets a tempo for the game. These Irish boys got to pick themselves up quickly as well, but what elation in those England ranks. It was a great prodded finish. Goalkeeper actually had no chance, was left a little bit isolated, chased down a bit of a lost cause in the England box, and what an absolutely fine finish, and what an absolute fillip for the team as well to get themselves underway. End whistle, just prodding home, right-footed, fine finish. Yeah, it's his second goal. Two in two games now for Jude Entwistle. Scored both of the England goals. And, well, there's still a hugely long way to go in this one. England, though, with the dream start. And Ireland now, the onus on them just to really settle down into the game and try to find some sort of a response. England won. Republic of Ireland nil inside the opening 15 seconds. At least you know when you concede that early, things can only get better. <laughs> it takes a little bit of leadership going on from that perspective. Captain needs to get a hold of them, tell them not to worry. Give everyone a touch of the ball and settle into the rhythm of play. Strong challenge there in the middle of the park, but it's Republic of Ireland here coming forward now with Russell Vargas on this right wing. Left-footed delivery in towards the back post. It runs all the way through. Appeals for handball there, and the referee is an interested waving those penalty appeals away now, i think it did actually hit archie elston's hand there it was up in the air an unnatural position as it would be said but very much accidental certainly big appeals lots around us in this stand as well nothing given yes yeah, certainly came off the arm didn't it maybe a little bit fortunate there elston to see the referee turn that one away but as you say maybe couldn't get his arm out of the way in time Just a warning sign that though for England after the perfect start to this game. But the Republic of Ireland there coming forward through Russell Vargas on the right wing. Yeah, they have Connor Cannon as a big target man. Really big physical presence wearing two for the Republic of Ireland. Certainly looks like he could be a formidable aerial threat as well if those quality crosses are going to come in. forward there from the free kick hooked away by Coyle 
as the Republic of Ireland look to clear their own penalty area. And it's out over on the far side for a throw in. Luke Hampton, though, will be delighted with the start that his side have made. Hasn't gone their way in the opening two games, but that's more like what he was hoping to see from this under-18 schoolboys team when he put the squad together through the trials process, extensive trials process, as it has been. Taken down there in the middle of the park by Evan Lynch. The Republic of Ireland have possession again inside their own half of the field but it's quickly given away and England win it back only had it for a split second though Donahue now couldn't quite feed it past the England defender but you can see what he's trying to do there yeah, looks like he's got good quick feet Donahue been sharp picking the ball up in his own half went to want it back when he made that initial mistake as well so it does look like they'll play with some width down both flanks of Republic of Ireland to get service out to those wingers yeah, and there was a right old scramble for possession over on the far side there, which ended in the free kick being given to England again. In a very similar to the position to the one which we just saw taken. Cox seems to be playing off this left side and drifting centrally for England tonight. In previous weeks we've seen him take position up over on the right wing, but playing off the left flank instead this evening. Cannon there helping it forwards and Wants it back as well here, Dara Coyle, but it's offside, the assistant referee raising the flag, and offside is the call. Yeah, tight one, right in front of us, Archie Elsden from the far side, certainly making an appeal. You have to be careful, that one is a full-back, dropping behind the centre-backs when they don't know you're there, play everyone on side along the line, but clearly decisive action taken from the assistant referee. Yeah, it's another England free kick once again to be sent direct long forward which we've seen on three occasions now from England as they look to go more direct in search of either Entwistle or Freddie Hayden up there here's Parker for the Republic of Ireland up against Elsden sliding challenge but the ball wasn't won the referee points for the foul and free kick to follow yeah, rightly given Donahue again with good quick feet on that left flank for the Republic of Ireland. Just too quick, draws the foul. Great opportunity here. We talk about that aerial presence that Republic Ireland appear to have. They need to get this delivery right. Going to be an in swing up. Yeah, definite foul, wasn't it, from Jack Matten there, as we just saw on the replay. Certainly came through and didn't get to the ball. Nothing coming of that follow up free kick as Ireland weren't able to still test goalkeeper James Taylor yeah, missing that first man we see it so much right throughout all levels of the game massive frustrations at professional level when you have these top players can't even beat that first man similar situation there bouncing ball inside the England penalty area but it's hooked clear up towards Hayden but swept up nicely at the back there by Doyle Travers England throwing in the right-back position. Elston takes that one forward down the line. Put to the chest of Hugh Parker, the number nine for the Republic of Ireland tonight. England now on the attack again, though. And it's dealt with, swept up well. And back to goalkeeper Cooney, who didn't have the introduction to his Centenary Shield campaign that he was hoping for with that goal inside the opening 15 seconds Cooney brought into the team tonight to replace Edvinas Harkas yeah, I'm not sure to thank his teammate Travers the centre back either for that back pass just had to slice it sideways into the stand for England still a bit scrappy as you might expect early on here no one really getting the foot on the ball neither side managing to string too many passes together England coming forward here though it's fine in search of Aaron Cox and out for the England throw it Stein there with the throw in direct into the penalty area. Cannon's clearance away. 
Well, Dominic Ivanen looked to kick-start the counter-attack here. Again, it's Russell Vargas. Well defended, though, with the header out of the danger zone. Russell Vargas brings it down. Coyle. Island play out with comfortable possession, but again, just a moment of promising sign there for Ireland as they look to turn defence into a attack quickly on the, the transition and counter-attack forwards with Russell Vargas on the right wing. Cox away from the first challenge, slips it through. Entwistle's effort on goal, but it's held on to by Cooney. Yeah, interesting choice, taking it on his right foot where you think that can slide across his body onto his left, maybe get some more power in. You see the breakaway, it's a good little set into his path. There, can he take one touch outside, hits it with his left, goes with the right instead. Worked for the first goal, can't really blame him. Yeah, and maybe just a bit of a nerve settler as well there for Oshin Cooney in the Republic of Ireland goal, holding on to that one. Comfortable save though. As we've played nearly 10 minutes now, England leading by one goal to nil. Jude Entwistle's goal in the opening minutes. It's been lively so far though, Matt. What have you made of it up until this point? I mean, obviously the early goal is, is great for England. They haven't actually dominated possession since then and, and Ireland have reacted really well come into the game. At some point you just, the class of the player who will give himself that bit of extra time, bit of composure, maybe make the extra pass where other players might just turn around the line, turn the back four round. So just looking for a little bit of composure from somebody just to dictate the tempo of the game. All a bit frantic so far. England win that ball centre field. Houlihan trying to spread the play out wide left. Here is Aaron Cox, but just left the ball behind there. Travers, long ball over the top. Is the goalkeeper going to come and get that? Just stuttered a little bit, but in the end, came forward to collect the long ball through there. Taylor. Long over the top again, this time for England. Small with the ball through, but it runs all the way out and behind for the goal kick. 1-0 to England. Yeah, Honohan doing well, chasing in the channel, just using his physical strength to muscle the ball out. Definitely the width is going to be important for Republic of Ireland. Can they supply these two wingers, both with a bit of pace? Can they get this ball out to them, allow them to isolate those England fullbacks 1v1? The goal kick which is taken long there by Cooney. Good header from the England centre back Jack Matten. Wasn't actually in the England squad to begin with at the start of this Centenary Shield campaign, but called up following an injury to Archie Small. Good challenge. Here's Coyle, slips it through, no offside flag. They're asking the question of the referee again. And he's just stayed down here at the moment as well, Hugh Parker. I don't know if he might have kicked his own teammate here. It'll be a painful one because he's got the full follow through, all the power of his body going into the shot. He either kicks his teammate or just stubs his toe in the ground, and this will be a really painful one. Full shot going through the angle. Hope he's going to be okay. Fortunately, he sits himself up. We'll just see if we gets that shot. Arcs is well. He's run really well to get in. Yeah, just kicks the ground. Little bobble on the ball and kicks the ground. Looks like he's actually going to be OK, but it will have given him a shock at the time. That'll be a painful one. Yeah, Parker just being seen to here by the Ireland physio Seamus McWalters as the England players and Irish players alike now come across to just take some messages and fluids on board. You'd imagine there'll be no need to panic, though, at this stage for Ireland and Derek O'Brien. What do you think he'll be saying to, to his side here just to settle down into the game a little bit and, and see more of the ball or, or how do you think he'll be passing messages on to his players on the field now? Yeah, just certainly we'll be talking about having that little bit of composure as well. Obviously, that puts you under the pressure with the early goal. OK, you've got the rest of the game to do something about it, but you know if you can see the next one, things get that bit tougher. So it definitely can change things, but they've responded well. Resilient enough, these young men. I'm sure they'll be absolutely fine. It's just all the planning that you do, all the preparation goes out the window immediately when you can see the goal so early. It's a proper shock. 
Yeah, well, the good news for the Republic of Ireland is that Hugh Parker is back on and will continue, at least for the time being, but still moving a little gingerly out there, so I want to keep an eye on. Fine. Forward once more in the left wing position for England, and it had just crossed the line, so it's out for the Ireland throw in. Yeah, a little bit worried for Hugh Parker. This is going to be a sore one. He's a, got a great physique, developed, very well developed in that regard, but when you've got that muscle power going through the ankle in that situation, pretty firm surface here as well, that will definitely have shocked him. Flick header there from Cannon, but only to Houlihan for England. Slipped there, did Deacon Smalley, quickly back to his feet. Fine sending it forward in search of Hayden, who's playing off the left flank. And the England coaching staff not happy that the decision was given against their team there, but it will be a free kick for the Republic of Ireland. They have quite like the look of Aaron Cox playing on the left side for England. He's the one I've talked about that bit of composure. Just taking an extra second at time. And players can get the ball under control easily as well, have a picture, know their surrounding as well, so they, they can move that ball with an option. He's certainly been a standout in these early stages. Matten again with another strong header at the back there, winning the aerial battle for England, but it doesn't lead to anything in terms of an attack on the Republic of Ireland. Goal! Coming off an England head and will be cleared away. Small on the diagonal, just asking a question of the Republic of Ireland defence. But again, it's goalkeeper's ball. We passed the quarter of an hour mark. England leading the Republic of Ireland here at the Poundland Bescott Stadium by one goal to nil. Jude Entwistle inside the opening 15 seconds. Two number eights there battling for possession in the middle of the park. Ireland come away with it. The free kick again given to the visitors in that wide left position. Let's see if they can make better use of this free kick this time than they did the prior opportunity. Hugh Park on the end of another robust challenge. Does look to be moving a bit easier now though. Might just get away with this one. So the delivery to be sent in from the left flank, it's a better ball in there, goalkeeper came and you could hear the call from James Taylor. He's an extremely commanding and tall figure in there for England, stands at six foot seven as England have a man down. The referee's going to stop the game for the head injury concern here, rightly so. Yeah, sent whistle it was who got punched in the back of the head by his goalkeeper, I'm sure he'll thank him for that, but James Taylor did exactly what he should do in those situations, even if your teammate's going for it. Once you're committed, you make sure you go all the way. If there has to be collateral damage, someone else can sort the problem out. And we see you can't change your mind halfway through. Entwistle the same way. You can't be brave enough to make the header. You can argue about it afterwards. Yeah, back to his feet now, the England goal scorer. The referee will restart play with the drop ball. England just getting players back to set up defensively. A bit man down for 30 seconds after this restart. Ball just dropped to the feet of Evan Lynch and Ireland come on the attack again. Quickly calling Entwistle back on in actual fact, who's avoided the 30 second period off the side of play. It looks as though it's going to be a long throw here for the Republic of Ireland, but it didn't turn out that way, not what they were after. Clearance wasn't what England were asked them after. Might prove problematic, but it didn't in the end. Got away with that one there, though, Jack Matten. Through here, and England threatening again. And it's just wide of the far post. Freddie Hayden direct. And in taking the shot on, had the goalkeeper beat him, but just a whisker wide. Yeah, just a slight misjudgment from Travers, chasing the ball down the channel. And he runs really well. scooting away down that right flank and then it's a question of do you get your head up there's the slight misjudgment does he get his head up are there any teammates supporting 
chooses to go across goal, aiming for that far post. Nothing wrong with that. If you can make the goalkeeper make a save, he parries it out into the six-yard box. You make Mike slamming the rebound. Ireland here coming on the attack again. Good ball into the box. Well dealt with, though, by the England defence to get clear as far as Cox. Battling hard for it. Firm challenge. Sent Dara Coyle bundling over. And the decision is Republic of Ireland throw it. Yeah, good physical combat right in front of the bench. As you would imagine, both benches having a slightly different view of proceedings. Here's Russell Fargas. Couldn't quite keep the ball in play though. Just slightly overcooked there from Connor Cannon. First few substitutes being sent out to warm up. That's the applause that you can hear from the spectators in the stand on the side of the two benches. Again, flick forward into the England penalty area, but again, good goalkeeping from James Taylor, who was alert to it. Quickly out to gather that one. Cox. His end whistle goes for goal from a very long way out, though. It was speculative and an audacious effort to say the least. That's what early goals do, give you that confidence to shoot from anywhere. It certainly wasn't the right option that he took in that regard. Just trying to link play a game, but again, started with Cox, just having an extra touch, playing through those midfield areas. Certainly a player that England looked, need to look to get into the game as much as possible. Ireland picking up the second ball in midfield. Good challenge, though, and England have it again. Hayden, Cox ahead of him. Plenty of space here as well for Aaron Cox. Driving now towards the penalty area. Gets the ball across. And it's a bit of last-ditch defending. And the effort from a long way out again was, oh, it's going to take something special to beat goalkeeper Cooney but again promising from England and again really positive play from Aaron Cox yeah, a couple of very natural looking step overs as well to create the opportunity and a dangerous ball whipped across the six yard box eventually the clearance fell to Houlihan and he just snatched his shot of it sliced across it this is often the way when you're just trying to get the power into that shot quickly not really have his feet set let off for the Republic of Ireland Yeah, Aaron Cox, certainly one who has started brightly here, attends Brockhouse College. That's a lovely flick from Cox, right on cue. Here's Hayden. Well swept up, though, by the Republic of Ireland defence. It's out for an England throw in. Into the box and end whistle on the volley! What a goal! Jude end whistle at it again for England, and it's two 0 Well, talked about it with his last effort. Possibly needs to use his left. Sometimes you don't need to lose use your left when you have a right like this. This sits up brilliantly for him, but he puts his laces through the ball. Absolutely no chance whatsoever the goalkeeper Republic of Ireland just had to watch it Cooney as that ball whistled past him brilliant finish instinctive finish as well took the shot early just a brilliant connection kept the ball alive England won the ball in that final third which is often dangerous sits up so well for the big centre forward what a night he's having so far yeah well you mentioned the importance of the second goal England getting it there what a strike that is from Jude Entwistle the man from Burnley College, here representing Lancashire County Schools FA, and really representing them well so far. Scorer last week and two goals today on a hat trick already. As England moved two goals to the good. Look at Ireland here though in the attacking penalty area, and again, it's collected by Taylor. 
Just shows, doesn't it, though, the difference when you can take your chances. Not been much in the game apart from, silly as it sounds, the two goals. But possession-wise, been pretty even. Chances created, pretty even. Pressure, but stand out in the results so far. Cox is header. It's Stein. A couple of step-overs from him as well. Good block, though, to stop the cross at source. Past the midway point of this first half now. Chew Dent Whistle with two goals. As England lead by those two goals to nil. 1v1 here though for the Republic of Ireland. It's an opportunity for Parker. Well defended though. And Jack Matten, who really needed to get that right. Was left all alone at the back there for England in defence, but did superbly well. Yeah, it was aggressively high line from England and they left him isolated, but didn't panic, it was a difficult one, he couldn't play it back to his goalkeeper. When that ball's in the air, you're having that little, oh, that's a problem. But did well, got a bit lucky with the ricochet, hoping to clear his lines. Here again, just a warning sign on the England goal though. The moments they have been positive and promising Republic of Ireland, but England, very much the same can be said for them. Cox! Certainly had the spectators up on their feet, but straight down the throat of the Republic of Ireland goalkeeper Cooney. Great skill for a winger when you can go outside and cause trouble and come inside as well. Decent strike with the right foot, just got it too central into the goal, trying to curl it outside the goalkeeper. Entwistle helping it on towards Hayden. Hayden into the box and it's another save. Called into action again there, Oshin Cooney. Every ricochet just getting a chance for England at the moment. The two centre backs need to get themselves together, get a bit closer, tuck their full backs in, be a bit more secure in that Republic of Ireland back line, and they give it away again, 30 yards from goal. Good header out there, important one from Honahan. Asking for offside again. And obliging in giving the decision, the linesman raises his flag. England might be asking where this form has been previously in this campaign, but it certainly looks very good in going ahead with this two goal lead. Fines throwing forward down the line there for England. Header away again from Honahan. The free kick is given to Ireland. Yeah, England coming into this game off the back of two defeats, and that, of course, will be what has remained in their minds. But the performances haven't been too bad. There have been certainly promising signs that this sort of a first half may have been on the horizon today. The Republic of Ireland were aware of that going into the game too. They're coming forward again here, England. Aidan that time just unable to control and bring the ball into his spell. It's only a very slight build, Hayden, but he's quick. Runs off the shoulder of those two Republic of Ireland centre-backs really well. Happy to run the channels as well. He'll be a threat in over half clearances. Looks like he'll be able to catch most things. Donna there with the throw in the Republic of Ireland then sent high up into the air from the left back McDonna. England's turn to try and make ground with the throw in. Ricochet bounces the way of the visitors though, McDonna the ball up to halfway. I think the Republic would be a bit disappointed they haven't been able to hold the ball better. We made a little bit of an issue out of the physicality they appear to have in the front line. Three big six foot plus playing in those forward areas but haven't really been able to hold the ball up. Cannon slips that one through and again 
Taylor alert uh, to the edge of the box. And it's goalkeeper's ball. And poor Hugh Parker still hobbling off that injury from kicking the ground in the midst of shooting earlier on. I'd be surprised if he comes out after half time. Really not moving well at all. Yeah, it's definitely one that the Republic of Ireland coaching team will have to assess. Of course, Hill be desperate to stay on, but it might be taken out of his hands in terms of the decision to do so. They do have seven players available, six, six of those outfielders on the substitute bench tonight, Republic of Ireland. It's two more than England have on their bench. Ball over the top here for Cannon, gets there first. It's a heavy collision with the goalkeeper who stays down. The referee allows play to go on. And the effort is then sent wide by Patton. And still, England goalkeeper James Taylor down in the penalty area. Yeah, he's really brave. He actually hesitates in coming. And that's what just delays that approach a little bit. But once he's committed, like he was earlier on with the punch when he catches his own teammate, Entwistle, here he just spreads himself, Peter Schmeichel style, makes himself as big as possible. I think probably just got caught in the follow-through. Sure, he'll be fine here. But he's certainly brave. Decent opportunity for the Irish, though. Certainly got to the ball first as well. Play just stopped for a bit of treatment for the goalkeeper, but I don't think it's going to be anything too serious. Yeah, Connor Cannon beating the England offside trap that time, though, in behind and got there first. Goalkeeper almost came out of nowhere, though. Quick out to meet him there, Taylor, who has played every minute of this Centenary Shield campaign so far, but England do have Ryan Johnson as a substitute backup goalkeeper option. He's just going through a precautionary, you would expect, warm-up at the moment. Yeah, good bravery from both. His cannon was certainly committed, but he knew that he would probably get caught in the follow-through as well. Came through it OK. Probably just trying to get a bit more lift on the ball than he intended. Went with power. English goalkeeper Taylor spread himself really well. Referee just calling the players back onto the field of play again. It's the second short stoppage that we've had in this first half after the Republic of Ireland physio was on to see to Parker earlier as well. We'll restart with the goal kick, but that's probably the closest that Republic of Ireland have come. They'll try and take the, the positive signs where they can from what they've seen in this opening half an hour, but trading by two goals away from home. Taylor's long kick forward, that time didn't reach the halfway line. In run throw. Put into the stand in the Republic of Ireland right back position. Fine again on throw and taking duties. Maybe the chance to cross as well here, Josh Stein. It's a high one towards the back post. Runs all the way through and keep it alive. Alston then though just taking a heavy touch when it mattered. Deep delivery, search of Hayden. The Republic are able to get it clear. Again, battling hard for that was Connor Cannon, who's been tenacious in those duels so far. Slipped through, but the flag there should go up and does. Certainly looked to have just gone a little bit too early in behind that time. Parker eager to get the one on one chance on goal, but doing so just found himself caught offside yeah, James Taylor very quick out again it does make a save he wouldn't have known for sure that it was going to be offside a little threaded ball and actually you think with that space center forward should just be able to hold his run enough should be bright enough just to maybe arc the run Hugh Parker to get in just a little bit over keen again Cannon battling for it no foul, Cannon just lost his balance though, and in the end the referee does give the free kick the way of Ireland. Just maybe tried to play an advantage there for the visitors and brought it back the referee. Good officiating from 
Jamie Howe. Yeah, a bit of a mismatch in physicality. Once Cannon got his feet sorted out, you see that big upper body strength that he has. Definitely a handful, but certainly this sort of area. Whip the ball in, aim for that far post. If everybody misses it, you've got to give them a chance to go in. And England, how brave can they be holding this defensive line around that penalty spot? Got to be brave, got to be talked, don't drop too early. Donahue takes it then, it's into a really good area. And the header is just over the bar. Taylor came but didn't get there that time. And it's a let off for England. Yeah, fantastic delivery. Just dropping a little bit early, England bring so much pressure onto your goalkeeper means that they can't come into the space see how quickly the players have gone back in generally a little touch there takes it past the goalkeeper maybe just too strong a connection taking the ball over the bar yeah Hugh Parker's header must have certainly felt it had a chance when it left his head but would have been disappointed to see it land on the roof of the net Just over 10 minutes to go until half time. Plus stoppage time at the end of the 45, of course. Here's England left back fine again. Ends up down in a heap. Patton again searching for Connor Cannon. It's a good challenge, but Cannon breaks through that. And the last touch is coming back off Cannon. And it will be an England goal kick. There's a little bit of a coming together off the ball there between Cannon and Deacon Smalley of England. The referee has some sorting out to do. It's just threatening to boil over a little bit. Yeah, and Cannon showing frustration, kicks out, makes definite contact. It's it's not severe, but it's petulant, and you don't get away with that in the modern game. I'm not necessarily sure either of the officials really saw it. Play shake hands, good feeling. It certainly hasn't been that type of game. I'm surprised but it's not particularly good conduct from the big centre forward. Yeah, referee has just come across to have a word with his assistant. And he's now going in search of Connor Cannon, so we'll see if it's just a talking to between Cannon and Smalley here, or whether there will be further punishment. Smalley has been told to vacate the scene, and I think the yellow card is going to be shown the way of Connor Cannon for that. Yeah, good for the game and it wasn't particularly malicious it was somewhat misguided yellow card certainly suffices keep the game competitive yeah he has been a real competitor so far for the Republic of Ireland as they've looked to get him in that 1v1 duel on numerous occasions but just letting his frustration get the better of him perhaps there as the decision went against him in terms of the goal kick rather than the corner as well as that clearance clears the stand new match ball being used for the throw in again another good aerial win there from Jack Matten at the back for England he's been excellent read the game really well showed composure when he's been able to brought a couple of balls down used very intelligent distribution but there where he's had to mix it up put his head in bravely for his team he's done so as well been impressive particularly as you say he's not been involved right from the start with this squad certainly seems to have integrated himself really nicely now Taylor's goal kick, didn't quite get the same height on it that time. Cox controlled on the chest. Just a loose ball there, I think two England players left it for one another. Coyle's throwing, sent forward first time then by Patton on the volley. Parker, Cannon dispossessed, the challenge on him. And immediately trying to turn defence into attack, Deacon Smalley. Too much on it though that time to be caught. Yeah, Cox a willing runner down that left channel. It's just over hit a little bit, be set off early, which will like make the defenders mind up for him. Get up! Get up! 
wide and just trying to create some space for the ball to then find him. Hayden, wide oh, right, oh, and yes. nice touch. A judge to have come back off the England man there. Yeah, he's a bit unlucky. Forged himself a path down that channel. Just thought he might have pinched the corner at the end of it. Both teams will be looking to half time now. So the Republic will not be wishing to concede again. 3 0 will look a real mountain to climb for them in the second half. England will be really pleased, but want to consolidate this two goal lead they have. Try to dominate possession leading up to the break. Firm header back again, got good distance on that. Here's Smalley with space to take a pass. Didn't find anybody in red that time though. Smalley, challenged there and stays down. The game continues. The Republic of Ireland in possession. Trying to slip it through to find Cannon. Same outcome though as we've seen on numerous occasions now with Taylor sweeping like that. The game's just been stopped as Smalley stayed down. Did momentarily get back to his feet, but is I think the physio is being called for now. You should be fine, don't him coming on when you have to go off the pitch to defend these set pieces, good refereeing there, allowing the advantage to be played, a little bit of a pullback, saw how the play developed, and when the play came to nothing, all ended up, got Taylor's arms, brings it back for the free kick, really good, good part of the modern game, that game of being allowed to go on further before the referees bring it back, a bit more rugby style, certainly good intervention. Yeah, so no treatment that time. And the free kick here for the Republic of Ireland, sent towards the back post. It's heading goal bound by Cannon. England free kick just judged to be a little bit over eager in his attempts to get to the ball that time. Honaghan. Yeah, Small is still hobbling from the initial challenge on the halfway line. Maybe a dead leg. It, you call a stinger, possibly have been a nerve. Issue there, just <laughs> looked like he couldn't really control his leg properly. It's a painful one for him, he's trying to run it off now. The challenge there from Smalley, back involved in the action. Nice pass as well to find Cox. That's a good challenge, and the ricochet taking it back off Cox before the ball crossed the line. Fine with a hacked clearance forwards. Might turn into a good pass though. In search of Hayden. Oof. Appeals. The referee says corner. Conahan takes a bit of a chance right in the corner of the area. Somewhere you do not to be conceding a penalty. I'm not sure if there isn't a challenge in the back where no possible chance to get the ball. Is there just enough? Bit of a shove? Probably not. Good decision from the referee who had a good view of it. Corner to England though, taken in low, bouncing ball, wasn't connected with that first time of asking there by the Republic of Ireland defence, still England with it. Spicer's delivery, haven't seen too much of him so far in his return to action and on Spicer gives away the foul. Yeah, he's got a lovely left foot, we just haven't seen enough of it, that distribution, trying there for the early cross, certainly the right decision. Forward from the goalkeeper all the way through here to Donahue. Up against Alston. Donahue just forced to track back, then tries to employ a back heel. Donahue an option for the ball back again. Ends up with the island corner. Now Chilsden conceding the corner, tried to let the first ball run out. Wasn't really enough pace on the ball to allow that to happen. Big opportunity for the Republic and they drag themselves back into this game a couple of minutes to go to the, the half-time break this would give them a real boost packing that six-yard box getting bodies around the goalkeeper how good can the delivery be everybody in that six-yard box pretty much goalkeeper Taylor got 
is two fists to it. Good sliding challenge then, though, to disrupt a potential England counter attack. Pops with the ball up to halfway, and that's a foul. Didn't have control of the ball there, Hayden, but it was he who that pass was meant for, and a bit of a cynical challenge on halfway. Yeah, that would have been a foul in rugby, that challenge, I think. <laughs> McDonough it was coming across just actually couldn't stop his momentum nothing malicious about it at all and actually unfortunately in the modern game you see that type of cynical foul not necessarily the place for it here but decision making breaks play up stops that quick counter from England Small's ball forwards Duffy Island will clear away how they would love to get a goal back here late on in the first half to change the picture a little going into the midway point and the half-time break. England have been on the receiving end of plenty of challenges like that. And just need to be careful here, Con and Cannon, not suggesting that that was necessarily worthy of a yellow card, but on that tightrope, having already been cautioned. Yeah, but I like the honesty of Archie Small. He's got lovely left foot, not the biggest centre-back, but he's read the game really well, swept up nicely in that central left-centre-back position. And I like this from the referee as well, just bringing the skipper over, just allowing... Connor Cannon a bit of time to cool down can't get yourself sent off in here let your teammates down that would have been an untidy one to pick up a second booking for minimum of three minutes added on at the end of this first half then a first half in which we've seen two goals both of them scored by the England number nine Jude Entwistle and England will be hoping that they can in these three minutes hold on to their two goal advantage going into the break good header in there from Evan Lynch now Smalley finding Entwistle trying to turn provider that time for England big bustling old fashioned centre forward isn't he Entwistle all energy when he gets the ball a little bit of finesse he was trying there challenge yeah really good tackle there as Republic of Ireland were in need of one as well England breaking forward on that left flank again been really dangerous over on the left side in this first half England and again as a result of that it's going to be another set piece by way of this corner Oi Spicer again to take with his left that swinging delivery dealt with by the Republic of Ireland defence. Now Russell Vargas and the counter-attack is alight here for the visitors. A couple of options to the right and players up in support. It's a good ball through, there's a chance before half-time. It's a really good and important last-ditch piece of defending there from Deacon Smalley to get back and deny Patton. Fantastic challenge, he's made up an awful lot of ground. Certainly the Republic's best moment there, got the timing of the pass really well. Straight ball, diagonal run, England holding on a bit at the end of the half. A miscued clearance away as the corner was taken relatively quickly. It's out for take two. Ireland just applying the pressure and it came as a result of the England corner and the counter-attack. As we see there on the replay. Yeah, really good first touch as well. Nicely weighted ball. Great challenge. So another corner for the visitors. Again, it's a packed six-yard box. It's a delivery. The outside of the post, I think. Goalkeeper was across there, but it was the woodwork that intervened. And now it might be England's turn to counter. Cox. Has Houlihan inside of him. Might not need him here. Cox goes for goal. Bouncing effort. Difficult one for the goalkeeper. Still there on the follow-up. And the second time of asking Cooney. He's able to hold on to it. Grateful for that. He'll be the Republic of Ireland goalkeeper. It stays 2-0. Does well with the first one because it bounces horribly right in front of him. Just the way that Cox strikes across the ball. That little bouncing half volley for a goalkeeper. Not good. Gets up quickly from there. And here in the background, referee brings the first half to a close. England winning 2-0 at the moment. Close contest though. Yeah, it certainly has been. That just about rounds off this first half then. 2-0 to England here at the Poundland Bescott Stadium, the home of Warsaw FC. Jude Whistle. Got it all going inside 15 seconds. The Republic of Ireland have had moments in that first half, but Entwistle again 
the scorer of England's second goal as well. A brilliant strike it was on the volley, meaning that at half-time, it's England under-18 scoreboys 2, Republic of Ireland under-18 scoreboys 0. And just as we head into half-time then here and the break, which will last, of course, around 15 minutes, we have a short video to show you all about the English Schools FA and the amazing opportunities that they've been providing to school pupils all across England, up and down the country in the last 12 months. Here's that. The English Schools Football Association is the national governing body for schools football in England and creates footballing opportunities for hundreds of thousands of players from primary school right through to sixth form and college. Let us show you some of our highlights from just the last 12 months. Working with a variety of sponsors and partners, the English Schools Football Association, or ESFA, creates opportunities for school children in England to take part in footballing experiences that they wouldn't otherwise have the opportunity to enjoy. In 2023, the ESFA launched its Year 3 and 4 Kickabout Festivals in partnership with the Premier League and the FA. These events gave over 4,500 primary school pupils the chance to experience a fun footballing activity in 24 locations across the country. This initiative grows into the Premier League Primary Stars Festivals for 2024 and the ESFA and Premier League hope to provide these fantastic early experiences to even more young players. The ESFA's National Cup competitions create playing opportunities for over 123,000 secondary school pupils across England from around a thousand different schools. The national finals took place at Stoke City and West Bromwich Albion last year and the team worked hard throughout the season to create fantastic events for the participating players in the PlayStation Schools Cup and the Arnold Clark Schools Cup competitions. This includes streaming all of the national final events live and for free on ESFA TV. Leo Smith! Cover the back for Harkness. For oh, a goal! Really good. Oh, it was a ball oh. in. It's still there as well, and it's finished off. And a fantastic strike into the corner. Goalkeeper Liam Martin. Oh. What a penalty! That Top might have been bid. the pick of the bunch! Top bid! What a way to win, <laughs> win the competition! The Pokemon Primary Schools Cup caters for teams in years 5 and 6 and gives tens of thousands of players the opportunity to play schools football. These competitions progress from local district rounds to county rounds and on to regional rounds all of which are organised and run by the ESFA's fantastic volunteers, of which there are thousands all across the country. This army of volunteers work tirelessly to create schools football activity, including this opportunity for school teams within the Pokemon Primary Schools Cup. The competition culminates with 24 teams from across England heading to the national finals, which took place at Leicester City in 2023. Inclusivity, accessibility and availability of footballing opportunities to all pupils from all backgrounds and all walks of life is a high priority for the ESFA. The Deaf Schools Finals, which are held in partnership with Royal School for the Deaf Derby, took place at St George's Park last year. This event has been a regular highlight in the ESFA's calendar for over 10 years now. The ESFA has plans for a blind and visually impaired footballing event in 2024 and continues to work with the Association of Muslim Schools to also create further activity for their pupils too. 
Another way in which the ESFA works hard to engage pupils with the many benefits of schools football is by utilising its Schools Football Week campaign, which takes place in the first week of February each year. In 2024, the ESFA saw over a quarter of a million school pupils across all ages benefit from Schools Football Week activity, taking the game from the pitch and into the classroom. The England under-15 school girl and under-18 school boy teams are chosen each season following a gruelling trials process and after being nominated by their local county schools of faith for the opportunity to take part. You can see the players here at their final trial for the 23-24 season before the squad selection took place. International players have attended St George's Park for a training camp and their kit presentation before heading into their competitive fixtures for 23-24. For more information on the English Schools Football Association and how you can support the ESFA on its continued mission to provide schools football to pupils across England, check out the schoolsfootball.org website or head over to at schoolsfootball on X, Instagram and Facebook to find out more. Welcome back then to the Poundland Bescott Stadium, the home of Warsaw FC. England under-18 scoreboard is here leading Ireland under-18 scoreboys by two goals to nil. Both of those having been scored by the England number nine Jude Whistle. Let's show you the highlights then from the first half. And this right at the start of the first half, right from the kickoff. As you can see there, the long ball forwards. And England under 18s getting off to the perfect start here with this Jude Entwistle goal. Lovely neat finish as well. That is past the on rushing goalkeeper Oshin Kuli. Nothing he could do to keep it out and not the start to line between the sticks and goal for the visitors. His first start in the centenary shield that he was hoping for. Jude Entwistle immediately involved in the action. And you could see from the instant celebrations as well what it meant to the home support. And the chances continue to come as well throughout that half. It's been a really lively half of play. It's been a really good watch this game so far. Really well fought and, and closely competed, if the scoreline may not suggest so as well. Ireland have certainly had their chances. This a good save from goalkeeper Cooney, one which he would expect to make though. But again, more promising and positive England play as Aaron Cox slid the ball through again to Entwistle just took it with the outside of his foot there didn't he as Matt alluded to at the time maybe would have been better off going with his weaker left foot and this was the second goal what about that excellent strike on the volley from Jude Entwistle and no stopping it a little bit fortunate perhaps in the way in which England got the break of the ball but there's no doubting the quality of the finish and those two goals, ultimately, the difference between the teams at half-time. Those the two most important moments that have mattered in the first half. And Whistle again involved there for England. He's been really the heart of most things good in that first half, certainly from an attacking point of view, alongside... Aaron Cox, who's also been extremely lively coming in off the left flank. It was Freddie Hayden there with the effort on goal. And then a save for James Taylor to make. Hasn't been by any means a spectator in that first half, though the England goalkeeper has been very much involved, in fact. He was left out in a bit of a heap as well as a result of that, but good to see that he was able to continue on for the entirety of that first half. 
in a follow-up effort with the, the net gaping. The referee didn't stop play there either as the goalkeeper was down. A couple of England defenders back there would have maybe had a chance of stopping it, finding the empty net, but it was certainly a chance. And that, though, probably the closest that the Republic of Ireland have come with the delivery there from Donoghue and the header from Parker. On another day, it might have been 2-1 going into the break. But ultimately, still, the Republic of Ireland has failed to get past Taylor in goal. Connor Cannon certainly wants to keep an eye on in the second half, though. The Republic of Ireland number two, who was on a yellow card midway through that half and committed a foul late on in the half as well. He was the player who just slipped it through there for the Republic of Ireland to create the chance. He's been lively going forwards. Maybe just a little bit of a, a liability out of possession, though, and, and Republic of Ireland will need to keep an eye on him in terms of the discipline issue going into the second period. But at half-time, it's England who lead by two goals to nil. Don't go anywhere, as we'll have the second half coming up in just a few minutes.
Welcome back then to the Poundland Bescott Stadium, the home of Warsaw FC. We're at half time. It's currently England under 18 schoolboys 2, Republic of Ireland under 18 schoolboys 0. And it's very much the latter with work to do in this second period if they are to get anything from this game and add to their one point tally from the two games that they've played prior to today. Two goals in that first half, both scored by the England number nine, Jude Entwistle. It was a good display from England overall in that first half. Matt Jackson, what do you think the Republic of Ireland will be looking to, to change moving into the second half? We see them making a substitution just here. Yes, they are a defensive one. I'm actually pleased to see that Hugh Parker has made it back out. We saw him pick up that injury in the first half and he was hobbling heavily throughout. He's actually got himself back out here for the second. It's actually a couple of changes by the looks of things for the Republic. Yeah, Callum Costello and Tom McLaughlin are going to be coming on here as a double substitution. So two players introduced at half-time by the Republic of Ireland boss, Derek O'Brien. Okay, just looking to add a little bit of energy into this second half. They want to make as quick a start as England did in that first half. An un unbelievable start, really. Very much getting on the front foot here, the Republic. Need to get this goal to get themselves back into the game. Yeah, we are back underway. The Republic of Ireland attacking the goal where most of the attacking play was in that first half, but Ireland had their opportunities in front of James Taylor's net as well. They'll be hoping for a response here at the start of the second period. You know, it's very much on the visitors to come out and take the game to the hosts now. Confirmation you may have just heard there from the stadium announcer that it's Callum Doyle Travers and Aidan Russell Vargas, the pair who have been replaced there for Republic of Ireland at half time. So Costello and McLaughlin on for Doyle Travers and Russell Vargas. Let's see if they can make the impact in this second period that they'll be hoping to. Throw in here for Coyle, taken forwards towards Costello, who's the substitute wearing number seven. Swept up there by McDonough. Back to Cooney. A little bit too much pace on the back pass from McDonough. Straight at the goal as well. Never hit the target on your back passes generally is the rule the header again there from Matten who won plenty aerial duels in the first half as England get the first free kick of the second period they're both defending again Archie Small hasn't been afraid to put his body on the line for the cause here tonight certainly swept up well when the ball's been on the floor but he's made his fair share of aerial challenges as well seen out of play comfortably there by the England number six Archie Small Low start to the second half, certainly not what it was in the first period, but Ireland will be more comfortable with the start they've made to the second half than they were in the first half. It's a long ball towards the back post, a deep delivery with the cross, but it just didn't quite have the intended direction and it's all the way out and behind. Certainly shades of the intensity of the first half with fairly untidy passages of play, nobody really being able to get the ball under control. Certainly no midfield control for either side, particularly playing through the thirds, defending a little bit more direct with the approach. Direct again from Taylor from the goal kick. Taken down by Spicer. And foul. Just a little bit too much contact in the back perhaps there from Kyle Donahue. England free kick.
Again, they'll load the penalty area. Forward here, England. Swinging delivery. It's a bad one. Seemed to evade everybody there in the centre. Won't be able to make contact, but England do manage to win the corner. The wind blowing direct behind England this second half should help them. Certainly these corners in swingers will be dangerous. In swinging corner it is towards the back stick and it's there for the shooting chance as well at the second phase of play but well high and wide in the end but it was an opportunity for England as the ball broke back their way there. Yeah, good composure from Ashton Cahoulahan. He takes an extra touch. Manages to get a couple of Irish defenders to dive in. Just see the little touch he takes. That doesn't really get himself set for the shot. He'll be disappointed not to hit the target. Frustrated with himself as he should be. Decent opportunity. Yeah, next goal in the game. If it were to go England's way, you feel at that stage it would likely be game over. But, of course, if the Republic of Ireland get one back, then... That plants the seeds of doubt in the minds of the England players. Loose pass there though, giving it away to Donahue. Donna back to Donahue. Forward first time off his left foot. Time for an iron throw it. Five minutes played since half time. Still England two. Republic of Ireland nil. Certainly yet to get going at the same intensity as we saw throughout that first half here in the opening exchanges in the second. Houlihan. Couldn't find a teammate though, was in between the runs of Hayden and Cox. Here's the substitute, Costello with the ball into the area. It's a good defensive header over the bar and for the corner. Yeah, brilliant distribution from the Republic of Ireland goalkeeper. Fine strike up that right channel and then an early delivery. Once again, fantastic defending. Don't take a chance knowing that there's anybody behind you. Deal with the ball. Well done, Archie Small again. He's read the game really nicely tonight. Swinging corner, sent right into the danger zone. And again, it will be Anton behind for take two. The last touch coming off an England defender. Yeah, not quite sure how, because it looked like a brilliant opportunity. Slight misjudgment. Again, public have had bodies around the goalkeeper all night. Where's the ricochet? Yeah, defensive header in the end. Not sure he knew too much about it. Another good decision from the referee. Yeah, he's had a good night tonight so far. Jamie Howe, the match official. Kept control of proceedings as it swung all the way through and overcooked that time that particular delivery. It's a disappointing one for Ireland. Yeah, they can't give up those sorts of opportunities cheaply. I thought they'd be a real threat at set piece. Not managed to translate that particularly in the course of this game. That physical presence they have up front. That delivery is so so important. Houlihan there battling for it, it's taken away from him though by Costello. Spreads the play out wide right again here for Ireland. That's the first challenge, can't quite get past the second though. McLaughlin spreading the play here to Patton. England have it back, slightly heavy touch but it just about worked out. OK for them in the end, Smalley now, options either side, kicks a good ball through, still options in the centre if they're wanted, and in the end the ricochet, the little bobble takes it through to Cooney. He never really got himself set and twistle in that instance, looked like he could take the ball down the channel, 
Striker with his left foot trying to cut back inside. Once you're coming into that pressure, that body situation, made it more difficult for him. Header on from Spicer. Now Hayden. Good sliding challenge from Kyle Donahue. Waiting to make a substitution here, the Republic of Ireland, but it wasn't spotted by the referee. I think we will have that change to be made now. So, in addition to those two changes which were made at half time, boss Derek O'Brien here is going to withdraw Hugh Parker. And coming onto the field of play is Adam O'Halloran. Yeah, unfortunately, really, for Hugh Parker, he'll be frustrated because after that early injury, self-inflicted injury when he kicked the ground, hasn't really been 100% throughout. Surprised he's actually lasted this long. No side flag there against Hayden. Thought there may have been. The flag stayed down. It's a foul in the aftermath. Cooney's long diagonal is a really good one. Neat footwork as well into a shooting area. Really nice move that until the finish. At that stage, in that the requisite quality. You just have to have an awareness around you. Another good challenge coming in as the cutback was excellent. You think you've got that little bit of space. There we go. Just get your head up a little bit. Possibly a slight bobble on the ball as well. Didn't allow Callum Costello just to really execute the shot as he would have wished to. Out of his penalty area here, Taylor, but comfortable in doing so. Scrambling back to goal now, though. Cannon. Oh, just over. Evan Lynch took it on, took it in his stride and fired the shot in left footed. Not far away to one back there for the Republic of Ireland. Oh, I'll be disappointed. Connor Cannon does really well, lays him in down the channel. Perfectly weighted pass. And you've got to hit the target. Could it be the little chip over the goalkeeper as the goalkeeper advances? A bit of composure. Yeah, probably would have been the required technical skills. Great chance. Can't let too many of those go, the Republic. Freddie Hayden, the England forward, just came across there and had a word with assistant boss Matt Atherton, passing on some messages from the technical area. It's again a warning sign for England in defence. Ireland have had those positive moments since half time again, particularly with the introduction of Costello. Spicer, this better for England though now. Houlihan battling hard for it. He's done well there and wins the free kick too, Ashton Houlihan. Oh, he's tenacious. One, you, Not you. the tallest, but he's got a great low centre of gravity. He's worked really hard. Oh, no. Comes alive when the oh, ball no. turns over. Wins possession there. More importantly, wins a free kick in a really good area for England. So important, that type of player, and have the diligence to do the defensive work that's required. Free kicks taken towards the back post area, but too much weight on the delivery. Taken nicely on the chest by Alsdon, but didn't break to a teammate. Again out to the right flank here, Republic of Ireland. Again it's Costello with the delivery in. Nobody there though for the visitors. Seems lively though since half time. Callum Costello and his half time introduction taking up a very wide position. Yeah, old fashioned dribbling wingers, aren't they? Delivery into the box is hacked away, more up than away though, really. Smalley got his head to it, but couldn't bring the ball under his spell. Still the pressure mounts here on the England goal. Long range 
short, but it didn't get off the ground. That time from Dara Coyle. And Tottenham from Ireland. Uh oh, Patton just went past the England defender. Thought for a moment he might have been in there, Patton, but didn't come to anything in the end. England have just been pinned in their own half for a bit, haven't they? Need a passage of play with them, get some passes in here in this midfield area. Keep possession a little bit. Draw and another. again, foul. Yeah, that will break play up a bit. Alleviate some of that pressure. It's an awkward fall for Hulan. Left shoulder. Yeah, that's two challenges he's been on the end of. In a matter of as many minutes now, really. Ashton Hulan, the England central midfielder. This within shooting range, you would imagine, from the free kick as well. Once Houlihan has been seen to. Yeah, central as well, certainly enough space to get the ball up and down over the wall as well. Who's the technician? Who fancies it? Yeah, well, there's four or five of them around where the free kick will be taken from here. You'd imagine Entwistle, given the technique that we saw on his volley earlier and on a hat trick may have an eye for this as well it looks as though it's been a discussion we'll see who will take this free kick set piece then confirmation of the yellow card there shown to Kyle Donahue as well for that challenge so he becomes the second player caution today joining Connor Cannon his teammate in the referee's notebook So it's Deacon Smalley then who is going to take on the free kick taking duties. There's plenty queuing up towards the back post as well. Smalley does go for oh. goal. It's an absolute rifle of an effort. Plenty of power and not far over. No, just always rising. A brilliant strike. Went for a little bit of the Ronaldo swerve and the ball never really moved. It was such a pure strike that he gets on it. Watch how this one just rises all the way. Strikes it perfectly with the laces. No subtlety in the run up that's all about power fine strike whistling through the wall should be a great view of it see how pure that strike is great power goalkeeper would have saved it being on target would have managed to get a hand up there in time after this is Freddie Hayden Plays it across. Might still break back to an England player on the edge of the penalty area. Oh, oh that's a nasty coming together after the referee's whistle as well. And there's some sorting out to do as it all boils over. Tempers are beginning to fray. Referee's assistant with eyes on it as well. And it's all kicking off. Yeah, it was a poor challenge that comes in not needed either it really hasn't been that sort of game Obviously we saw a little bit in the first half of Connor Cannon but nothing malicious about that this is really not a good challenge again I'm sure the officials will confer find out exactly what's gone on I would imagine a yellow card here for Deacon Smalley came flying in certainly the Irish boys didn't they're just playing on they want to get the game underway which I admire from the spirit of the game officials just doing the right thing making sure that they know what goes on the scuffle afterwards look you get a bit of reaction but nobody did anything too stupid a bit of pushing nothing too serious just the initial foul I think that should be punished good well, they got the right man anyway yep referee there Jamie Howe just calling back the England number four Deacon Smalley Also here talking to the Republic of Ireland captain, number four as well, Callum Honaghan. Just a shake of hands between the pair, as you say. I think everybody's ready to get back on with the game now, but the referee just settling the situation down in this yellow card apiece there for the two number fours. So Smalley and Honaghan both booked. Yeah, good refereeing again, sensible, not wishing to be the centre of attention, just deal with the information, sensible decision, there's a little bit going on the benches as well, it's brilliant how much it means to people. And now the 
fans are beginning to get involved as well. You can hear the boos as the referee comes across to the fourth official, Keen Salisbury. In between the two team dugouts, the yellow card is out again. It's a member of the England backroom staff there being spoken to. They're going to be setting the example. Maybe just take it on the chin instead of arguing the case. Yeah, well, it was a strange one because, as you say, it seemed as though everybody was ready to, to play on, but then it all kicked off again between the two sets of coaches. Certainly nice to get the game underway again. It's what we're here for, after all. Yeah, so the yellow card there showing the way of one of the England backroom team. And hopefully now, finally, we'll get back underway. But you'd imagine that will certainly contribute to an extended period of stoppage time from the end of the 90 minutes as well, because that was a bit of a lengthy delay, around four minutes, I believe, in total. The game there stopped four. Back to the action. Whereas Republic of Ireland take that throw in. And another Jack Matten towering header as well. He's been so good defensively for England. And we're sore. And to get to it first was the Sochichito Halloran. Teams asking for the decision there, but it goes England's way. Sixty-five minutes on the clock now. Still, as we were at half-time, on the scoreboard, two-nil to England. As Hayden there is wrestled to ground for another England free kick. Yeah. Just exuberant from Carl McDonald, but he just doesn't need to make the challenge dangerous area again to give a free kick in away in looks more naturally set up for an in swinger here but actually going to be Deacon Smalley with the out swinger with this right foot yeah the Republic of Ireland leaving one player up on halfway everybody back defending this set piece Smalley it's a de deep delivery again towards the back stick right into the mixer once more lovely header back across and that's a brilliant England goal and it's Jude Entwistle with his hatchet complete England three Entwistle three Ireland nil yeah but he's had some assistance great striking instincts to get across that six yard box that's why giving the free kicks away in those areas is so dangerous goal doesn't come directly from that but it does give England the chance just to apply the pressure certainly to get themselves that real buffer now but what a header back across and whistle received a brilliant assist coming in absolutely fantastic power in the header from Freddie Hayden ball looped up to him and he just threw everything at it big looping cross you think at this point it might be going dead look how well he does everything into it and like the best strikers, lurk around the middle of the six-yard box, you will get yourself goals. And Whistle has three. Yeah, and another assist for Freddie Hayden. Those two were linked up with that same combination in England's consolatory goal last week, as it proved to be in the end. Have again combined for England's third here tonight. And Jude Entwistle of Burnley College and Lancashire County Scottles FA on the international stage tonight with a hat-trick. And England might now sense the opportunity to really rack up the goals as well. Yeah, don't get complacent, don't take liberties, keep playing the right way. Certainly helps, three-goal cushion at this stage of the game. Bit of it petulant that time from Entwistle in 
conceding the free kick. England have a man down. Just as we see the goal again, this header back is absolutely fantastic. Back across the six yard box. The finish was relatively simple. The art is being there as the ball arrives. That was certainly the case for Jude Entwistle. So good from Freddie Hayden. You saw the exuberance in Freddie Hayden's celebration, almost as though he'd scored himself as well. Rightly so. Big contribution he's made. Double substitution incoming here then for England in a very comfortable position. Three goals to the good, and it's going to be Kai Adams and Makara McNulty Hartnett, the pair to come on here. Adams, who usually occupies one of the two wide men winger roles and McNaughty Hartnett who's a bit of a versatile player has played in the back line and in central midfield in this Centenary Shield campaign so far coming off one of those two coming off there Jack Matten so I would imagine suspect that McNaughty Hartnett will slot in at centre back for a, a like for like change there with Matten and the second player to be replaced is going to be Aaron Cox so Adams we certainly want to look out for in terms of his pace, by the way, as he makes his introduction. He's on to replace Aaron Cox. Yeah, and I mentioned for Jack Matten, I thought was excellent all evening. Very good at the heart of that English defence. Completed brilliantly aerially, swept up really nicely, read the play well. Good night for him. Yeah, Matten's evening work, evening's work is done. He was the player just down receiving treatment as well, so... Maybe a contributing factor as to why that substitution was made, although I think the two substitutes were ready in actual fact prior to Matten going down there. Difficult ask now, of course, for the Republic of Ireland. Three goals down. Mentioned at 2-0 that the next goal in the game at that point might prove to be crucial. It's gone England's way. Three goals down, away from home. Failed to score in 71 minutes. It's not the situation that Derek O'Brien would have been hoping for pre match, that's for certain. Into the stand of spectators. Donner's throw in. And that's again for the Republic of Ireland, who are preparing another substitution by the looks of things. See that shortly. Time being, the game goes on, and England are coming forward again here. Hayden. That's the speed to get there. Didn't quite have the touch to take full advantage of it, though. Yeah, he's frustrated with himself. He does so well. They say old fashioned type will chase waste paper for you. Really quick running down those channels, a brilliant outlet for England. Just heavy with the second touch. Nicely sees the opportunity to be frustrated with himself as well, setting high standards. So, this latest Republic of Ireland substitution, Dara Coyle is the man to be replaced. And James McAteer is the man to come on here for the Republic of Ireland. So McAteer of Loreto Community School is the player to make his introduction. The goalkeeper was always favourite and was comfortable in being able to collect. Switch of play, nice one out here to Hayden. Slips a lovely ball through as well to Alston, looking for a cutback. There is the cutback, and it's in for number four. 
A really well worked England move and finished off by Oli Spicer. It just continues to get better here for the host tonight. Yeah, a really good flowing move from England. Number of passes made, great ball inside the full back, running on. And Spicer, he's got a lovely left foot, shows it here with the finish. It's a quality finish. Really good composure from him. Good midfield play arriving into the box, anticipating the cutback. England can really relax and enjoy themselves now. Good night's work from them. This is a really good move, good team move. Individual play previously, there's the pace down the flank. Little cut back, Spice just adjusts his feet really nicely. Doesn't lash at the ball too much, hits the target. Clinical finish. Yeah, goalkeeper might be disappointed that he didn't keep it out there, but it did come through a bit of a crowd of bodies and quickly to him as well from not far out. But England, four goals to the good. And Oli Spicer adding his name to the score sheet alongside Entwistle's hat trick. It's quite the contrast to previous results so far this campaign for England. A night that has been on the horizon, perhaps. It's been waiting to happen, though, for this England team. Just the disappointment after the game will be that they couldn't have replicated this in their away performances. They've had to wait until tonight to really get flowing the way in which they showed signs that they were able to do. Offside flag is up. Yeah, nothing quite happening for the Republic at the moment. Just can't quite have that. enough passages of play where they've got passes in. See if we've gone to ground here on the halfway line. Do you touch your cramp? Ready for another substitution to be made. Yeah, Ant whistle just being seen to and substitution ready and waiting to happen as well here Charlie Wooding he's going to be on to replace Ashton Houlihan Houlihan who's battled hard in midfield from minutes one today off to be replaced to a warm round of applause and Charlie Wooding who I mentioned earlier the mascots from BRS coaching FC pre-match Charlie Wooding actually used to play for that club so that's where the link is to the mascots who are here today up from Bournemouth Charlie Wooding will make his introduction at this stage as we are in the final 15 minutes of play now also Toby Nelson has just appeared from the dugout you'd imagine that's likely to be for Entwistle given the treatment that he's just received And indeed, confirmation, Jude Whistle being replaced. And that might just be the warmest round of applause tonight so far. As Entwistle gets a bit of a standing ovation from sections of supporters as well. Patrick Hero tonight for England, Jude Whistle Replaced for these closing stages now by Toby Nelson. I think with that change, Freddie Hayden will occupy the centre forward role and substitute Nelson will take a position on the right wing. So a little bit of a reshuffle in that front line for England. It's a front line which has very much been functioning well tonight. Yeah, now they still have to take a really clinical approach, do the right things here, keep doing your hard work, pass the ball mentioned before we don't take liberties in these situations see the game out professionally as possible did well to begin with there McLaughlin in first keeping the ball in play and then evading the first challenge but his pass wasn't quite as direct as he wished for Another change, this 
the Republic of Ireland's fifth substitution of the night. The number up on the board is number six of Evan Lynch for the visitors. And Jack Ahern, the number ten, is the man to come on. of play there from Smalley. It's controlled as well, back to substitute Charlie Wooding. England have momentarily at least lost possession though. There's some way to recovering the situation, it's for the Republic of Ireland throw. Just over ten minutes to play. Ball there looking for McDonough. Fouled as well, says the referee. Yeah, the best passage of Irish play for a while. A number of passes going cross field on the long diagonal. I'd imagine it'd be too late for them, but this is a really good opportunity. Game one that looks like it should set up for an in swinger. Pace of the ball across the six yard box, make it very difficult for defenders. come across to take this to the left flank to take it with his right foot will be the in swinger two rules miss the first man make sure the ball is on target inside that far post let's see if Callum Costello can do both swung right in towards the far post area and forced the goalkeeper to turn it away Firm challenge, good one for England to win the ball back. And then the switch. Nelson cuts back inside, still going Toby Nelson. And that's a brilliant stop from Cooney. Down low to his left and got there the Ireland goalkeeper. Yeah, it does really well. Nelson definitely has in his mind should he pass that's a lovely little cutback has the option to go cross field there fine save from the goalkeeper might be one or two words just coming to him from his partner in crime up front who's been very unselfish tonight and Freddie Hayden but all he can do is make the opportunity to get in there he'll get his chances as well here he is it's been a bundle of energy all evening Small is the original corner taker, delivers now, it hits the crossbar. And it was a, a cross come shot on target nearly in the end there from Deacon Smalley. Yeah, I'm not sure he's intentionally shooting. It's been good this second half, but more of a grip on the game from that central midfield area. Certainly a good technician. Let's see if he meant this. Yeah, unlikely that that was the case. I'm not sure it was even worthy of a corner at the end of all that. I think certainly trying to deliver that one to the back post smallly, but England do get a corner as a result of it. Good header out, and the Republic of Ireland, as a general rule, have dealt with the England set pieces tonight. Just haven't been able to deal with the open play, and that's where England have created the majority of the opportunities. Foul on Nelson, right down beneath the nose of the assistant referee. Been good tonight, the officials, haven't they? Good all at the end of it as well. And force for Carl Donho just snatches at the shot, probably needs to compose himself a bit more. Goes for glory, it's a tough skill, ball bobbling, long clearance, difficult. Goalkeeper unsure whether to come. Half a clearance probably can have a touch here. That's tough. Ball on the rise, always like to continue going up, and so it was. Oh, 
Donegan his head to that England goal kick. James Taylor in the England goal will be hoping that he can keep this clean sheet intact now. Just over five minutes away plus stoppage time at the end of the 90 from that being the case for England, which should it remain that way will be another pleasing aspect as well, given the goals that they have conceded in this year's centenary shield so far. It's gone to ground there, Connor Cannon, but the game goes on. England with the ball, Smalley asking for it, didn't come his way to begin with, has it now Deacon Smalley? Cannon is back to his feet incidentally. England advancing forward down wide left, but it's straight into the hands of the goalkeeper. Oh, Archie Small, <laughs> wide left, and he's shown a great attitude tonight, sprinting hard to get back into position at centre-back. The liberties you take as a centre-back when you're 4-0 up, find yourself on the left wing. <laughs> Forward first time there by Nelson, still looking to make an impact as he has tried to do since his introduction. That was a late lunging challenge, the referee there playing the advantage for Ireland. And such a play is overcooked. And Spicer was the winter ground, just acknowledging to the referee this time from him. Wasn't high, wasn't malicious at all. forward by O'Halloran but couldn't find a white shirt Smalley <laughs> there trying to Set Hayden away. The offside flag is raised. Don't mind that as a four. You play on the shoulder, you take those chances, especially when you've got pace the way that Hayden has. And you need to get in once. England last year, of course, in the 2023 Centenary Shield finished on 10 points. They can't reach that tally this time around. Republic of Ireland will though still be looking to equal their four point tally from last campaign, which was enough to see them finish third last year. Referee had the offside signal there from his assistant on the far side, but still with the ball here, the Republic of Ireland. Bounces through and all the way out and behind. They do still have one game left to play each of these two. England, as I mentioned earlier, will be in action next Friday night against Scotland. That game to be brought to you from the home of Chesterfield FC. As for the Republic of Ireland, they're actually involved in the final game of this year's competition. Thursday the 18th of April is the date for their final clash away to Wales their final game so it's not an easy one for them I've certainly played their part tonight and they've been I think they can be disappointed obviously with the result but they've they've been really honest in their performance 4-0 feels a bit harsh I mean England have been clinically in front of goal taking the goals well and whistle quite rightly will grab the headlines with that hat-trick the game has been really competitive and just to show the fine margins can be even at this level. Still England in search of more. Fifth goal would really add insult to injury for Ireland if it were to come about for England here. 2 0 it was at half time, remember. Goals splits evenly by the side of the break. Smalley back into Alsden. 
And Nelson's delivery. Just a little too high for the initial run of Hayden. Hooper to Ireland will get the free kick. As we wait to see how much stoppage time we'll have here at the end of the 90 minutes as well. It's very much just a case of what the final score line will be now rather than the result England have known for some time now that they'll be picking up their first three points of this year's competition. And seven minutes, a minimum of seven minutes added on at the end of the 90. Two goals in the second half, of course. A few times we've had the respective team physios on and we had the scuffle as well. A couple of them with the benches getting involved as well. I think it was around four minutes that that was stopped for. It was hardly the heavyweight championship of the world, <laughs> was it? I'm not sure it's worthy of seven minutes, but so be it. Yeah, it tends to be the case in these schools' games. They very much play it to the letter of the law and add on the required time at the end of the 90. Island possession, trying to switch the ball out again to that left side, but it's a good few yards ahead of where McDonough would have wanted that one, really. Yeah, maybe you've just been a bit too direct this evening, the Irish boys haven't really played through midfield very much, possibly a slight difference in the contrast of the two teams. It's always going to be tough, you concede early. Strong you are mentally to come back from that. Great if you can respond quickly. Early goal for England after half time. Really wrapped up the tie. Ball into the stand again as we await its retrieval. England thrown again to be taken by Archie Elston, who's gone about his business well as a member of the back line tonight for England. In truth, though, there's been a whole host of really good performances from an England point of view. Of course, Entwistle will, as you say, take the headlines with the hat trick, but there have been plenty involved. Cox, particularly in the first half, Spicer with the fourth goal. Hayden has been very much a live wire. It's the time for another England goal on the turn. Hayden. Ireland are able to see out of their penalty box. Patton. It's done well there. Oh, that's a nasty challenge, this time, which is going to be the simplest yellow card of the night, I think. Yeah, O'Halloran's done really well here, picks himself up, no nonsense, no fuss, it's a poor challenge. Well, that doesn't need to be actually remade at this stage. I like the fact that there's still that real enthusiasm to go and be competitive, but that's a poor challenge that comes in. Just pleased that O'Halloran picks himself up, managed to ride it pretty well. Yeah, it's refreshing to see that from O'Halloran straight back to his feet despite the scoreline and certainly didn't show any signs of feeling sorry for themselves there. The Republic of Ireland back to the game. Archie Small for the latest yellow card, but he has in the main been really solid at the back for England tonight as well. Just tried to hold his run there, Hayden, but I think he knew he'd gone a little early. Yeah, he needed it off the first touch. Strange because normally Small, he's had very good awareness through the middle of the park, particularly the second half where he's been excellent. Just took an extra touch. Adam 
Adams over on that left wing involved for England. Alston. Back to Alston again. Lovely touch from Nelson. Alston's delivery and the head is on target. It's held on to that time by Cooney. Great move. Great delivery. Cooney does really well. Going down to his left-hand side. Again, bouncing just in front of him. Good solid hands from the goalkeeper. Yeah, slick play from England in creating the headed chance there for Kai Adams. He does everything right. Good connection, hits the ball down. Scoreline will, of course, be deflating for the Republic of Ireland tonight, not just the overall result, as there was a little bit of a high foot or, or low head, perhaps, there from the Republic of Ireland. Substitute McLaughlin. Can they find a consolation goal to take back tonight, the visitors? Not in that phase of play. Both of Ireland's games prior to today had been closely contested. Drew one of them and, and lost the other by just one goal. But tonight it's been a different story. And as you say, rightly, Matt, perhaps the, the scoreline not telling the whole story of the game because Ireland have had chances and, and Taylor has been involved for England tonight. But when it's mattered in front of goal, the quality has been there for the England under-18 score, boys. I don't think they were helped with the uh, early injury that Hugh Parker really had to carry. He was an outlet for them as a number nine, wearing nine and playing as a nine. Had good pace to go alongside Cannon, who had the physicality in the front line. Without him, without him at full stretch, they have struggled a bit to have an outlet, the Irish boys. Game management now for England. And right on cue, the referee blows the full-time whistle to the cheers and celebrations of the home support. England running out 4-0 winners here this evening against the Republic of Ireland in the Centenary Shield to pick up their first three points of this year's competition. A hat-trick scored by Jude Entwistle, 2-0 at half-time it was. Both of those first half goals scored by Entwistle. He got the third as well before Ollie Spicer added his name to the score sheet for the four. It's finished here at the Panland Bescott Stadium in Warsaw. Very much in favour of England. Full time, it's England four, Republic of Ireland nil. Let's show you the highlights then, the moments that mattered from that game. It was a game which started oh so well for England, wasn't it, Matt? Yeah, they've been excellent. <laughs> you talk about getting a quick start, that's actually the kickoff. Long ball forward, the public will be disappointed winning the first challenge, but you've got to get on to second ball. Really good play from England, direct. And whistle, having a little cut inside, a bit of a ricochet, getting the second ball, and a prodded finish for the perfect start for the English boys. Yeah, the dream start for Luke Hampton and his English team tonight. Neat finish past the on-rushing goalkeeper who tried to come out to narrow the angle there, but it wasn't enough. No, Freddie Hayden involved again as well. He worked so hard for the team, deserves a lot of credit. Then we saw just hustling, reacting well. Barreling old-fashioned number nine. Three goals, he'd be delighted with his contribution. Yeah, this was the second, and what a goal it was. Struck so sweetly on the volley. Yeah, great technique, very easy to get this wrong. Again, good striking instincts, moving forward, see what happens. Ball flicked up in the air, all about the connection, puts his laces through it. Just a brilliant finish, really tough for any goalkeeper to save that. That's difficult, the ball dropping that way. Great technique. Aaron, 
after half time England came out firing again it was a little bit of a slow start to the second period but when they got going England they continued to create chances and Jude Entwistle with his hat-trick complete wrapped up there with the close range header how about that for a heading assist as well yeah Hayden's so good in that regard I'm disappointed the goals went elsewhere but his contribution outstanding this is really good having to twist his body and get enough power into that head up back across good striking instincts as well and whistle again right place quite rightly went across gave his little mate a big hug thanks for those two assists yeah that same combination for England Freddie Hayden and Jude Entwistle certainly want to look out for that combination next week as well and then this the cutback from Smalley and the finish from Spicer just to add another to England's tally tonight that the fourth and Ollie Spicer back in the team this evening after injury and amongst the goals for England yeah, good technique just adjust his body isn't sure it's definitely going to come to him first one missed he just concentrates on that good connection Good player. Yeah, well, England then running out 4-0 winners with those four goals. It's a very much well-deserved victory tonight. Still games to be played in this year's Centenary Shield. We can show you the schedule, the results and the fixtures from the games that have been played so far and still have ahead as well. As I mentioned earlier, England will be in action next week at Chesterfield. So do join us for that one. And the Republic of Ireland will also be in action soon in their final game on the 18th of April against Wales. Those are the next two and final games for these two. But it's a three points for England, which they'll very gratefully take tonight after two difficult results to begin with. Thanks for joining us tonight, Matt. Any final thoughts just to, to round off the coverage on what was an excellent England display? No, good spiritual round. I like the way that the two teams have conducted themselves looked after each other pretty well okay we've had some little moments of tension but well officiated great occasion good play from England but just a good spirit and a really good advert for the game and very best success to all of these young men as they make their way in the game yeah well thank you very much for joining us this evening an evening which England have long been waiting for in this year's Centenary Shield but finally off the mark three points for Luke Hampton in his penultimate game as England boss tonight. We'll see you for the final one of those next Friday. But for now, it's England who celebrate and Ireland will travel home disappointed. Goodbye.